Have you heard something recently that makes you want to fight? Um, you know what I'm talking about, where you hear something that you totally disagree with, or you read something online and it just makes you angry, and you feel something rise up within you, maybe it's just that anger, or maybe it's also deeper than that, it's disgust, and you want to respond harshly, and you're having a hard time not doing so. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, given the current state of our world, I think I'd be surprised if you didn't. Scripture gives us some guidelines on how to respond in circumstances like this, among other places, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 23 through 25. Now, the specific context in this passage is arguments and controversy regarding theology in the church, but the larger context is controversy in general, and so these guidelines are excellent ones to follow regarding any controversy where ideas or people are in opposition to one another. Let's look at 2 Timothy real quick have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed fights and arguments. And the Lord's servant must not be argumentative, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, and correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth. So what do we do in the midst of controversial conversations that make us want to fight? Well, I've come up with a memory device that will help us to remember how we should respond in these circumstances. And the word that I'm using here is fight. Let's look at this visually. So again, in 2 Timothy, it tells us to have nothing to do with foolish or ignorant controversies. But those conversations that are worth having, we are to approach with gentleness in the hope that God will lead our opponents to the truth. So there we have F-I-G-H-T. So F-I, foolish and ignorant controversies. Scripture is very clear, have nothing to do with these. Foolish controversies are a little bit easier to identify because if we're getting emotionally heated about a silly topic, uh, we can usually identify that and kind of step back and say, this is, this is not something we should be arguing over. But ignorant controversies, that's a little bit harder because there are conversations worth having. We have topics that we're passionate about. And if we're talking realities and facts and figures um, in, a, in a kind way, great. But if we start entering into speculative categories where uh, we're using words like maybe and what if and what could be, that should be a clue that we have entered into a realm that is not from God, that we should exit from that conversation, that we should walk away, uh, not engage, change the subject. Let me give you a warning about trolls here. The anonymity of the internet oftentimes breeds conversations that we would never have in a public forum or face-to-face. -face. Um, we need to be careful about that. Um, and sometimes internet trolls are, are purposefully trying to uh, rile you up or cause some kind of emotional response for their perverse pleasure. Whatever their goals, don't feed the trolls. So the G in fight stands for gentleness or gentle correction. If we're in a controversial conversation, our response should always be gentleness and kindness to everyone, not just those that vote like us or think like us or are nice to us. Everyone means everyone. If you can't be kind, be quiet. We should also be able to teach, and that's an absolute one regarding theology. Um, it's also a good guideline when we're having conversations about anything. If we find ourselves entering into a territory that we don't know much about, we should stop and say, I'm sorry, I don't really know a whole lot about this topic. I need to learn more about it and we can talk about it again later. So then it tells us to patiently endure evil. And this may be one of the hardest things to do when we're in a heated conversation because we crave justice, right? Um, it doesn't tell us to avoid hard topics. It tells us how to engage in these controversial conversations because how we represent ourselves um, and who we represent uh, is oftentimes communicated in the way we respond to people as much as the things we say. And the H in fight stands for hope. And that's why we can patiently endure evil, because our hope is in God, who is in control, uh, to grant repentance to this individual who is opposed to biblical truth. And that's our hope for outcome as well, truth. That's the T. And not just little t, the truth of the argument that we're currently in, but also big t truth. 
that they would be introduced to Christ himself and the ability to be reconciled to God because of what Christ did on the cross. If our words destroy the ability we have to influence people for the kingdom, we've lost our primary objective. Remember, while conversations are worth having about meaningful issues, they're not our eternal hope. Christ is. If how we behave in these conversations turn people away from the gospel message, the church is worse off. Once again, we hope this time in the Word has been edifying to you, and we hope you'll join us again next time. See you guys later. Peace.